right now we have a sensor on the bottom of phase two and we have a sensor on the top of phase one accordingly here what we've done is we've ascertained that fields number one's pole there is coming out a little bit in time before the bottom coils pick up. Now we can note the advantage of combining two things in time whereby the next signal to be combined is that occurs in time afterwards. Right now, if you can't see, that taller peak is coming out in time just before the other peak. That's the phase relationship in space as shown by them sensors. Now we're going to move that sensor over in the correct orientation to pick up the difference in time of the signal to be obtained by wiring of the top and bottom signals. So what we're going to do there is we're going to move that sensor. We're going to pick that sensor up and flip it over. Put it back on top of phase three. see that signal comes up a little bit in time after the bottom of phase two. Okay, and in finality then also we are on the bottom of phase two on one sensor and on the top of phase three exit pole. We're going to move that sensor back so that the sensor will now show the time period between the phase sequence itself. And but to do that, we will move the point back over here. Now we're monitoring the top and bottom exit poles of phase two on the moon. Look at the scope the movement simultaneously. And we should be able to see that has broadened the phase angle from the previous determinations. Should be more looking 120 degrees the phasing by now. And that shows us that uh, there's a significant time period on that phase sequence of when they come out with their magnetic fields in time. And the difference between that is time is the pole connected to the line and the pole connected, the sequence connected to the line inputs versus the sequence connected to the capacity that it is resonating with. So we'll call that quits for now.